Hello everyone, welcome back to Indian Online School. So today I'm uh, here with one of your demo session of uh, SASMO and IMO CSA of grade four. So in this today demo session, we are going to discuss about LCM and HCM. Okay, so we will discuss about LCM and HCM that what are LCM and what are HCM. Okay, so before uh, going to start with LCM and HCF directly, uh, we will start with what are the prime numbers and what are the composite numbers. I know that you all know about what are the prime numbers and what are the composite numbers. So when we are going to dive into LCM and HCF directly, so before that, we need to understand that what is the basically difference between the prime numbers and composite number. Because these two things we are going to use uh, when we have to find what is the LCM and uh, when we have, have when we need to find the LCM and SCF of given numbers. So what are the prime numbers? So that you all know, the numbers are like numbers are varied. Numbers has, have started from zero and they are going till infinity. Correct. So the numbers who are started from zero and going till infinity, they are known as whole number. Correct. And the numbers which are started from 1 and going till uh, infinity, they are known as natural numbers. Okay. So, there are two types of number. One is whole number. Okay. And another one, what you can say, natural number. Okay. After that, we have prime numbers. So, what are prime numbers? So, prime numbers are those numbers which can only be divided by itself and 1. Okay which comes in the table of, of uh, 1 and itself only. Like what we can see, we have example over here, which is 13. So 13 comes in the table of 1 and 13 comes in the table of 13 only. Okay, 13 does not come in any other numbers table. If I'm going to talk about a number 2, so number 2 also comes in the table of 1 and number 2 comes in a table of 2 only. Okay. Uh, number 2 is not coming in any of the others number table. Okay, if I am going to talk about 4. So, what we can say about 4. 4 comes in a table of 1. 4 comes in a table of 2. And 4 comes in a table of 4 as well. Correct. But what is the difference between these numbers? Okay. okay. So, this 13, you can see this 13 is having a 2 factors only. Which is 1 and the number itself. Okay. So, when the number has only two factors, which is 1 and the number itself, then those types of number are known as prime numbers. Okay. So, prime number basically what we can say, a number that can only be divided by itself and 1 without any remainder. So, those numbers are known as prime number. Or in a simple language, we can say prime numbers are those numbers which have only two factors. The number and the number itself. The one and the number itself. Okay, so these numbers are known as prime numbers. We have some examples like 2 is a prime number. 13, uh, 3 is a prime number. 5 is also a prime number. 7 is also a prime number. 11 is also a prime number. Then 13 is a prime number. Then after that we have uh, 17 as a prime number. Okay, so we have so many prime numbers. We have. Okay. And then after prime numbers, we have composite numbers. So what are the composite numbers? So composite numbers are just opposite to the prime numbers. Okay. So what are the composite numbers? So numbers that are divisible by more than two numbers are known as composite number. Okay. So as I have already told you that four, about four. So four comes in a table of one, four comes in a table of two, four comes in a table of four. As you can see that 4 is divisible by more than 2 numbers. Okay, more than 2 numbers. If some number is coming in the table of more than 2 numbers, then we can say that particular number is a composite number. Understood? So, like this, what we can say, if I need to talk about a number 6. So, number 6 comes in a table of 1. Number 6 comes in a table of 2. Because 2 times 3 is 6. Number 6 comes in a table of 3. And number 6 comes in a table of 6 as well. So what I can see over here. So number 6 comes in a table of more than 2 numbers. Okay. So when some number is coming in the table of more than 2 numbers. Then that number is known as composite number. Understood? So if we need to give 
the definition for composite number so we can say that numbers that are divisible by more than two numbers without any remainder are known as composite number okay so here we have example like four is a composite number after that we have six as a composite number then we have eight as a composite number then we have nine as a composite number then 10 then we have 12 and then we have 14 and so on okay so we have uh, these numbers are composite number now if you can see that i have not included one in the prime number and i have not included one in a composite number as well so what is about one so one is the number which is neither composite and nor prime okay one is neither prime and nor composite because one comes in a table of one only okay so one is having only one factor which is one itself so we are not going to take one in a prime number and one in a composite number understood i hope you all are getting it okay now after that we are moving to some divisibility rules that what we are having of divisibility rule that what number is divided we can say without actually dividing what we can say about the numbers okay so if i need to talk about divisibility rule for two so what i can say if i need to check that whether the sum number is divisible by two or not so for that purpose i can say the last digit must be even number okay if some number is there suppose your number is three nine two zero four nine six so this is a very long number if i uh, if i'm going to divide this is with two and then i'm going to check it so it, it is going to take definitely it is going to take much more time okay so for this what i can do without actually dividing how i'm going to check that whether this number is divisible by two or not so i need to check the ones place digit okay so if ones place digit is an even number so what i can say this whole number is divisible by two okay so what i can see over here so at the ones place it should be either zero two four six or eight okay so if in the ones place digits are zero two four six eight then that particular number will be divisible by two correct now you can see one example over here which is three four four three four two three so here what you can see at the ones place there is a number which is three okay and three is not an even number so that particular number is not divisible by two okay so simply we can say that all the even numbers are divisible by two understood now we have a divisibility rule for three so divisibility rule for three that how we are going to check that some particular number is divisible by three or not so for that what we can do we need to add all the digits whatever given in the question and we need to check that the sum of the digits is divisible by three or not like you have a number which is written over here which is three seven eight nine so what we will do we will add all the digits of that particular number which is three plus seven plus eight plus nine now when we are going to add these numbers as a sum we are getting 27 over here now we need to check is 27 there in the table of three yes 27 is there in the table of three for nine times so what we can say this particular number is divisible by three correct now if i'm going to take another example which is written over here which is like uh you can see four hundred million uh, four hundred thirty two million six hundred and sixty seven thousand and thirty seven so if i need to check that particular number is divisible by three or not so what i'm going to do i will add all the digits and after adding all the digits i am getting 38 as a sum so if i need Need to check now 30 is uh, 38 is divisible by 3 or not so what i can say yes 38 is not divisible by 3 so which means that particular number is also not divisible by 3 understood okay now we are moving towards another rule which is a divisibility rule for 4 now divisibility rule for 4 is saying we need to check the number formed by the last two digits of the given number okay if the last two digits of the given number are forming the number which is divisible by four so that whole number is divisible by four okay so 
this uh, number is what you can see that 23 million 746 thousand 228 that is a number which is given over here now we need to check that particular number is divisible by four or not so what we will do we will see the last two digits of this particular number so the last two digits of this particular number is 28 correct now we will check whether this 28 comes in a table of 4 or whether this 28 divisible by 4 or not. So our answer is yes, 28 is divisible by 4. So which means that this particular whole number, the entire number will be divisible by 4. Understood? Okay. Now we are having a divisibility rule for 5. Now what is a divisibility rule for 5? So, for checking that particular number is divisible by 5 or not, what we need to do? We need to check the last digit of the number. Suppose your number is 42,340. Okay. So, in the last, there is 0. So, yes, this number is divisible by 5. Okay. So, for divisibility for 5, we need to check the last digit. If it is 0 or 5, then that particular number is divisible by 5. Otherwise, that number is not divisible by 5. Now we are moving towards our next divisibility rule, which is a divisibility by 6. So for divisibility by 6, we need to check that that uh, particular number should be divisible by 2 and that uh, number should be divisible by 3 as well. Correct. So for divisibility by 2, we will check that the ones place digit should be 0, 2, 4, 6 and 8. And for 3, we need to check that sum of the all digits should be divisible by 3. Correct. If uh, that particular number uh, or, um, what we can say that that particular number like uh, passes both the conditions then we can say that a particular number is divisible by 6 as well. So you can see one number is given or written over here. So in the last there is 4. So we can say that this particular number is divisible by 2. Now we need to check it by 3 as well. So this particular number, when we are going to add all the digits, so we are getting 42. And 42 again, 4, 4 plus 2, so what we can say 6. And 6 is divisible by 3. So this whole number will be divisible by 3 as well. If this number is divisible by 2 and divisible by 3 as well, so what we can say, this number is also divisible by 6. Understood? Okay, let's move on. Now we have a divisibility rule for 7. Now, how we are going to check that whether the sum number is divisible by 7 or not. So what we need to do, we need to make a twice of the last digit. Okay, and then subtract whatever we are getting after multiplying that digit with 2 from the remaining number in the given number. Okay. And whatever we are getting as a result, that is divisible by 7. So we can say that the particular number is divisible by 7. Okay. So suppose we have a number 343. So what we will do, the last place digit is 3 only. So we will multiply 3 by 2. We are getting 6. Now after that, in the second step, what we need to do, we need to subtract 6 from 34. When we are subtracting 6 from 34, we are getting 28. So now we need to check, is 24 divisible by 7? So our answer is yes, 28 is divisible by 7. So which means this whole number, which is 343, is divisible by 7. Understood? Okay. Now we have our next divisibility test, which is a divisibility by 8. So here we need to check the number formed by the last three digits of the number that must be divisible by 8. So we have a number which is uh, 234,568. We need to check whether it is divisible by 8 or not. So we will take the last three digit which is 568. Then we need to check if these three digits are uh, the combination of these three digits is divisible by 8 or not. So when we are going to check it, so yes, these 568 is divisible by 8. So we can say this whole number is divisible by 8. Now we have a divisibility rule for 9. Divisibility rule for 9 is same as divisibility rule of 3. 
okay so suppose we have a number uh, which is written over here like 4 5 6 7 8 6 456,786. So we will add all the digits. After adding all the digits, we are getting 36. And what we can say, 36 is divisible by 9. 36 is coming in the table of 9. So that's why this whole number is divisible by 9. Understood? After that, we have a divisibility rule for 10. That is very simple. So whenever digit any number ends with a 0, so that particular number is divisible by 10. Okay. If some number is there like this. So what we can say in the last it is 0. The ones place digit is 0. So which means this whole number is divisible by 10. Okay. Now we have divisibility rule for 11. Now for divisibility rule for 11, we need to altering the sum of the digits. Like we need to. Uh, make them uh, according to their odd places and according to their even places oh, and we need to add them accordingly. So you can see one number is here which is uh, again 416,042. We need to check whether it is divisible by 11 or not. So what we will do, we will add ordering digits like we will add 4, 6 and this 4 and then we will add 2, 0 and this 1. Okay, then what we ever we are getting like 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14. Okay, then we are getting 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So we are subtracting 3 from 14. We are getting 11. So 11 is divisible by 11. So what we can say this particular number is divisible by 11. Understood? Okay, this is for practice. Now, we are moving towards our main thing which is LCM. I know that you have all learned about LCM. So, what is an LCM and where we are using LCM? So, I think that uh, all of you have uh, already seen like so many traffic lights on the like traffic signals, correct? So, these lights, uh, there are three lights, red, yellow and green. Red indicates for stop. Then yellow uh, says to wait. And then go says you can go. So the green color says you can go. Okay. So have you ever think uh, that uh, when uh, what happens when these all three lights blink together? What will happen? Okay. So if these three lights will blink up together, so, so many things can happen. Okay. Accidents can happen. So many harms uh, can be done. Like... So many things can happen. Okay. So we need to check and we need to make sure that all the three lights will not blink up together. Okay. If someone asks you that in what minimum time they all light will take to lighten up together. What minimum time they are going to take to lighten up together. So for finding that minimum time that these all lights are going to take to lighten up together. We need to find LCM. Okay, now what is LCM? So LCM stands for least common multiple. Okay, LCM stands for least common multiple. Now the least common multiple of two numbers is the smallest number that is a multiple of both of them. Okay, what is LCM? So the LCM of any two numbers or more than two numbers is the smallest number that is a multiple of both, the, both of them. Okay. Now here you can see there are three words. Least, common and multiple. Now what we need to do with that. So for learning how to find the LCM, we are moving from downwards to upwards. So first we have multiples. What are the multiples? So multiples are basically the numbers that can be divisible by the given number without any remainder. Okay. If I am going going to ask about like uh, multiples of 2. Okay. Or if I'm going to ask that uh, about uh, 6, 10, 4. Okay. So what I can say that if I need to divide this 4 by this 2. So can I divide this 4 by 2 without any remainder? Yes, I can. If I need to divide this 6 by 2 without any remainder, can I divide it? Yes, I can. 
if I need to divide tan with this two without any remainder, can I divide it? Yes, I can. So what I can say, this four, this six, this ten, all are the multiples of two. Okay. So multiples are the number that can be divided by the given number without any remainder. Okay. Now multiples are formed by multiplying the numbers by their counting numbers. If I am supposed to find the multiples of 13, so what I am doing? I am multiplying 13 with the counting numbers. Counting numbers are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Okay. If I am multiplying 3, 13 by 1, so I am getting 13. If I am multiplying 13 by 2, I am getting 26. 13 by 3, 39. 13 by 4, 52. 13 by 5, 65. Correct. So these all numbers like 13, 26, 39, 52, 65 are the multiples of 13. Okay. Now you need to uh, note one thing over here that 1 can never be the multiple of any number. Okay. Multiples are always equals to or greater than the given number. Okay, whatever the question is asking for, whatever the number they are asking for finding the multiples, that multiple will always be equals to or greater than the given number. Okay, that can never be the less than of that given number. Okay. Now, we are moving uh, to common multiples. Now, how do we find common multiples? So, here you can see two examples. Like, we need to find the common multiples of 5 and 10. So how we are going to find it? First, we will write the all multiples that how whatever we can write. The multiples of 5 and the multiples of 10. Now we need to check that uh, what are the common numbers that are there in the multiples of 5 and multiples of 10 as well. So we can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All are there. Correct. All numbers are there in both uh, in 5 and 10 as well. So these all numbers are the common multiples of 5 and 10. Now, we are coming towards least common multiples. What is least common multiple? Least means the smallest. Okay. So, out of the common multiples 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, which one is the smallest? As you can see, 10 is the smallest. So, what we can say the LCM of 5 and 10 is 10 because 10 is the smallest common multiple that we have in 5 and 10. Got it? I think that this method you have already learned. Correct. Now we are going to learn the new method to find the LCM. Okay. That, that uh, you are not uh, commonly learning in the normal school in a fourth grade. Okay. So that we are going to learn in, here for SASMO and IM, IMO CSE exam. Okay. So... This is a long division method to find LCM and here we are using the prime factors of numbers. Now, to find the LCM of the given numbers by the long division method, we will use prime factors of the given numbers. And this method is also known as a prime factorization method. Now, what are the prime factors? As you already learned about prime numbers, okay, so we need to check that the particular number is divisible by what prime numbers? Okay, we need to check that. So here, example is given to us. We need to find the LCM of 15 and 24 by the prime factorization method. Okay, so what we can do? We will write 24 and 15 like this only. Now, always we will start with the smallest prime number. In this method, always we will start with the smallest prime number. And every time whenever we are going to make a division, so we will use prime numbers only. We will use prime numbers only. Okay. So first, the smallest prime number that we have is 2. So we are going to try that the particular number is divisible by 2 or not. So when I am going to divide this 24 with this 2, yes, I can divide it 12 times. Yes. Now if I am going to divide this 15 by this 2, so what I can say, this 15 is not divisible by 2. Because this is an odd number. 15 is not divisible by 2. So if some number is not divisible by the prime number that I have written over there. So what I can do. 
I can just bring down or I can just copy down that number as it is. Okay. Now I will draw one line like this. Okay. Now after that, I will take another prime number. So what I can see, the number 12 is there. And in the 12, the ones place digit is 2. Yes. And in the divisibility task, we have already learned when the ones place digit is an even number. So that particular number is divisible by 2. So here I need to make a division of 12 by 2 again. So I can make a division of 12 by 2 for 6 times. Correct. So I can write 6 over here and 15 I will write as it is because 15 is not divisible by 2. And why it is not divisible by 2? You can see the ones place digit which is 5 which is again an odd number. Now I can six, see 6 over here and 6 is divisible by 2 for 3 times. So I can make a division for 3 times over here and I will take a 2 as a prime factor. Again 15 is not divisible by 2 so I will carry down this 15 as it is. Now what I can see, I have numbers 3 and 15 over here. Now I need to make a division. So by 2, neither 3 is divisible nor 15. So now I am going to take 3. So I am going to make a division uh, by 3. So what I can say that 3 times 1 is 3. So 3 divisible by 3 is 1 and 15 divisible by 3 is 5. So I have written 5 at the place of 15. Now, I need to continue this prime factorization till I get 1. Okay, till 1 is coming, I need to continue this process. So you can see 1 is already here. Now I need to make this 5 as a 1. So what I can do, in 5 tables, 5 is there for 1 time. Now what you can see is this 24 and 15 both has been converted into 1. So I will stop over here. Okay. Now for finding the LCM, what else I can do? I will take all the prime factors which is 2, 2, 2, 3 and 5 and I will multiply them. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 8 is 16, 16 times 3 is 48 and 48 times 5 is 120. So the LCM of 24 and 15 will be 120. Understood? Okay. So here you can see that uh, practice question is also given over there and we need to solve it. So let's take 32 and 40 and try to find the LCM of these two numbers. So how we are going to find it? So here I can say this is 2 and this is 0. So both numbers are divisible by 2. So I will take 2 over here. 16 times I can make a division of 32 by 2 and 20 times I can make a division of 40 by 2. Then again I can see 6 is here and 0 in here and both are in even number so it is divisible by 2. So it is divisible by 8 times and it is divisible by 10 times. Now you can see 8 and 0 both are in even number. So again it is divisible by 2. I can take one, 4 over here and 5 over here. Now it is 4 again it is an even number. So I will 2 times 2 is 4 and then it is 5 because 5 is not divisible by 2. Then again you can see 2 is here. So again I can make a division. 2 times 2 is 1. Okay. And then 5 is not divisible by 2. So I will write down 5 here. Now I will make a, take a prime factor as a 5. And when I am going to divide it. So 5 uh, divided by 5 is 1. So here I am getting 1, 1. So I will stop over here. Now the LCM will be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32 times 5. So what I am getting? 160. Okay. So 160 will be the, uh, would be the LCM of 32 and 40. Understood? These questions you can try to do by your own. Now we are moving towards our another concept which is HCF. Now what is HCF? So when you are planning for a party. Okay, I am going to give you an example. So when you are planning for a party and want to ensure that nothing gets wasted or you need a proper estimate 
information that uh, how much uh, things you need. Okay, so for that, what you can do? So for that, you need to find the HCF of the given thing. Okay, so what is the HCF? HCF is highest common factor. Here also you can see three words, highest common factor. Now we will learn that what are the factors. So uh, factors are the numbers that can divide the given numbers without any remainder. Okay, so what I will see, so if some number six is there, so 6 is divisible by 1, 6 is also divisible by 2, 6 is also divisible by 3 and 6 is also divisible by 6. So what I can say that 1, 2, 2 3 and 6, all 4 numbers are the factors of 6. Okay, because 6 is divisible by all the numbers without any remainder. Understood? So now factors of 24 are 1 times 24 is 24, 2 times 12 is 24, 3 times 8 is 24 and 4 times 6 is 24. And here what I'm getting 6 times 4 is also 24. But what you can see the numbers are started repeating over here. So when numbers are started repeating, so we need to stop over there only. Okay, so we will count the rest of the numbers. So what I can say that the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24. All these numbers are the factors of 24. Understood? Okay. Now what we need to do. One thing we need to note over here. That 1 is always a factor of every number. Okay. Unlike multiples. Factors are always equal to or less than the given number. Okay, now we need to find the common factors. Now factors of 6 are this and factors of 12 are this. So what are the common factors? We can see the common factors are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Now out of 1, 2, 3 and 6, which one is the highest? 6 is the highest. So 6 will be the HCF of the given numbers. Understood? Now. I think this concept you have already learned. So this is the new concept where we are finding HCF through long division method. Okay. Now, we need to find the HCF of 15 and 24 by long division methods. How we are going to find it? So for finding the HCF through the long division method, we need to keep dividing both the numbers until we get 0 as a reminder. Okay. We will continue until we are getting 0. So 15 and 24... Those are the, are the number and we need to uh, find the HCF of these two numbers. So how we are going to find it? So first we will make a division of 15 and 24. So 15 times 1 is 15. 9 will be remaining over there. Okay. So now 9 is the remainder. And here you can see 15 is the divisor. So we will bring down this 15 as a dividend over here. Now we'll make, we will make a division of 15 by 9. So 9 times 1 is 9. Okay. 9 times 1 is 9. When we are going to take away 9 from 15, what we are getting? We are getting 6. Now 6 is remainder. And this time our divisor is 9. So it becomes our new dividend. So I need to continue the division with this. So 6 times 1 is 6. 3 is remaining. Okay. Now here what you can see that 6 is uh, divided at this time. So it becomes dividend. Now 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 minus 6 we are getting 0. So whatever uh, the last divisor is. So let that last divisor will be our HCF. Understood? Now we can take one example. You can see one example is 14 and 16. So 14 and 16 and we need to find the HCF. So what we will do, the smallest number is 14. So that will be our divisor. And the bigger number is 16. So that will be our dividend. So we need to make a division. So 14 times 1 is 14. 2 is remaining. Correct. So we will write this 2 over here. Now, what we will do, this 14 will come here. It becomes our dividend. Now 2 times 7 is 14. Okay. And... 14 take away 14 is 0. So the last divisor what we are getting over here is 2. So 2 will be the HCF of 
14 and 16. Understood? So this is how we are going to make a division. Okay, so along with that, what I'm going to do, I'm sharing one cues uh, with you that you need to do. So there is a cues uh, that you have to do and uh, this is of five questions. Okay, the link for this quiz will be in your description box. You can go through in, in description box and you will get an access for this quiz. You can do and uh, the, the, all these questions are based at what we have learned in this class. Okay, and if you want to register, so registration link is also there in our description box. You can go through the description box and uh, uh, get your link over there and you can get registered yourself through that link. 